Hello, it's good to be with you. I'm here today to talk a little bit about the book that our adult formation folks are reading, uh, Marcus Borg's Meeting Jesus Again for the First Time. I'll talk a little bit about the book and a little bit about Marcus Borg and then uh, specifically a little bit about the first two chapters. So I was first introduced to this book as I was discerning a call to the priesthood uh, some 20 years ago. And um, I've also had the privilege of being able to, uh, to meet Marcus Borg and to be in a few workshops uh, where he was the keynote speaker. Uh, and I found him incredibly helpful. Uh, he's opened up my way of thinking. Uh, he's challenged me in many ways. And he's uh, also um, uh, given me the capacity to assert uh, things about my faith that I am, uh, am pretty resolute about, uh, at least in my journey. Uh, and so I appreciate all of those pieces, the pieces I agree with and the pieces that I, uh, uh, I firmly disagree with and the pieces in between that I struggle with. But it is important to know uh, when uh, Marcus Borg was, was sort of coming into his own uh, on, a, on a larger scale and at the time of the, the Jesus movement, uh, I think the church was bending too much toward uh, one particular idea about Jesus. Uh, and he talks a little bit about that, the idea of Jesus as divine savior. Uh, and so much of the life of Jesus uh, was ignored uh, except for that last week, uh, the, 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 the death and resurrection of Jesus. And as long as we trusted in that last week, uh, the Jesus who came into the world essentially to be that sacrifice, that sacrificial lamb, uh, and, and ultimately died and rose again. If we trust in that truth, uh, we'll be saved. And so much of the rest of, uh, of the story didn't quite matter as much. Uh, the, um, the incarnation itself, the teachings of Jesus, uh, all of those other aspects of it um, uh, were kind of diminished. And I think that he uh, and the Jesus movement gave voice to the fact that there's a lot uh, in the life of Jesus that needed more attention. And so I'm very appreciative of that. Um, I do think uh, sometimes the corrective can go in the other direction. He speaks to that a little bit as well. I, uh, I worry that the Jesus movement focused a little bit too much on the, the teaching of Jesus, uh, and you had Jesus as this exemplar uh, teacher uh, who had some wisdom to, uh, uh, to offer humanity, uh, or Jesus, the divine Savior, who, who came and uh, gave his life uh, ultimately for uh, all of our sins and rose again, or was raised again. Um, and uh, somewhere in between uh, is the Jesus that I fell in love with, uh, the, um, the Christ who, uh, uh, who was from God, who was uh, the self-revelation of God, uh, and the person of Jesus who lived uh, in, in, in a particular time and place uh, and experienced what it was to be uh, to be fully human. Uh, and th those matter a lot to me, and so I'm not willing to give any of, of that up. But I do agree wholeheartedly uh, with Marcus Borg's premise that uh, ultimately uh, we are called to be in relationship, a relationship that uh, transforms our lives. Uh, and it's not so much about uh, following his teachings uh, or subscribing uh, to the fact that he died and rose again uh, as much as, as absorbing both of those uh, in the context of, of being in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And, uh, and that's, that's sort of the truth that I found. Uh, and I uh, really appreciated in that first chapter uh, hearing how Marcus Borg's journey uh, uh, took him from, uh, from point A to point B. Um, and, um, and how this work uh, really reflects uh, both his intellectual and spiritual journey um, as well. Uh, and and I, I did enjoy and appreciate and think we get a lot out of understanding what life was like for uh, Jesus as a boy, as a, uh, as a man, um, what it was like to, to live in that Jewish uh, life in that particular time and place, uh, what it was like in Galilee at the time, uh, Nazareth being a, uh, a small uh, village but surrounded by uh, signs of uh, a Hellenistic culture and a, a more me metropolis um, environment that he might have been around. And, uh, and I do think there's a, a tremendous amount to be gleaned from that. And, and knowing um, what 
is authentically uh, the words of Jesus uh, versus what is the theology. And I think they both have value. Uh, you know, John uh, really ranks pretty poorly when they start throwing the beads, uh, which is such an interesting thing for me to get my head around, the idea of, of casting beads to determine the uh, efficacy of Jesus' sayings. Um, you know, the red, pink, gray, or black. Uh, and John loses every time. He's almost entirely uh, black beads. Uh, but there's probably as much truth uh, in that first chapter of John um, uh, than in any other piece of scripture, um, or certainly the same amount. Uh, but it's theology. It's not historical accuracy. Uh, one of the things that Borg said at one point in time that's always resonated with me uh, is that I'm not quite sure if it actually happened that way, uh, but I know it's true. Uh, and I think there's a lot of uh, scripture that I, I meet that way. Uh, and so I do struggle sometimes as he starts to discredit and, and, and tear up some of the things that I hold to be true, even if I uh, have to acknowledge that they probably didn't happen exactly the way that, uh, that the story unfolds um, as, as, it, as it happens. So, um, you know, so he goes on to talk about how Jesus was a, a likely a follower of John the Baptist. Uh, certainly in the, in the Gospel of John, I think uh, John's really trying to make a corrective for uh, the fact that, uh, that folks were, were, were following John uh, as much as, as Jesus. And, uh, and I do think that, that it's an important distinction to know that, that Jesus really saw his ministry in the context of Judaism. He was a deeply Jewish person, a Jewish mystic. Uh, uh, he was in, in, in a relationship with John the Baptist and, uh, and following that thread and never saw himself reacting against Judaism, certainly against the corruption of individuals within uh, or a corruption of elements of the faith. Uh, but he saw his movement um, as a distinctly Jewish one. And, and that, that is important, I think, especially as we look at what history has done with some of that. Um, uh, some, some real deep anti-Semitism that's, uh, that's, that's grown out of that. Uh, so uh, it is an important reminder, and I'm always surprised at how many children's eyes get big as saucers when, uh, uh, when I tell them, uh, you know, Jesus was Jewish. Uh, and I do think that there's also a lot to be gleaned from realizing uh, one of the great gifts of having the four Gospels uh, is that we not only have uh, four different histories, uh, and, and I think we get a, a deeper truth from, from taking those and putting them on top of each other, uh, but we also get uh, a history that happened uh, a couple generations later. Um, we get the history of the church in different places uh, as well uh, as a history of what happened and, and how those truths overlap, uh, I think adds uh, deepness and, and richness to it. I have our third graders uh, when we get ready for our Christmas pageant, and I'm talking uh, to them in their class about scripture. I have them read the four gospels, or I read the beginning of each of the four gospels to them uh, as they're preparing for the Christmas pageant. And uh, they quickly realize that Mark doesn't have much of any of their uh, pageant material, and neither does John, although they've heard that first chapter, uh, that almost all of it, or all of it, comes from uh, Luke and Matthew, but uh, but you can't get a great pageant with either of those alone that we do weave all four of the Gospels together uh, to get a picture of who Jesus is. And, um, and sometimes it's helpful to separate them, and sometimes I think it's helpful uh, to realize that uh, that they're, they're are overlaid and, and that our picture of Jesus is informed by all of them, um, and it's informed by uh, the, the historical truths of Jesus and also by the theological truths of Jesus and also by the truths that, um, that have unfolded through the history of the church. And so, uh, so I think all of that, um, understanding that all of those layers are, are there, uh, I find important. Uh, so um, that second chapter talks a little bit, um, and I struggled with that second chapter, I have to admit, because it deals with more of the things that I uh, really, really don't subscribe to in terms of Marcus Borg's teachings, uh, and, that, um, and that is that Jesus was uh, an inspired and, and, and godly man, uh, but not necessarily uh, of God, that that was sort of a later, um, a, a later construct. And, and uh, I do know 
historically there's there's accuracy there but i also uh truly believe that jesus is the incarnation the self-revelation of god and uh and so much of my faith is uh cemented so much of my love of of god uh is through the self-revelation of, of god in jesus christ and, and through the very fact that uh that god became like us uh, through Jesus, and so, uh, and so I struggle a little bit. You know, he uh, he makes two claims about um, uh, uh, two negative claims. So, so uh, uh, he contests two truths, and and neither of these give me a tremendous pause. Uh, uh, but uh, but he contends that uh, Jesus was uh, not messianic; uh, that he didn't see himself um, uh, as uh, the one who, who, who was to, uh, to redeem Israel. Uh, he didn't see himself as that messianic figure that, that scripture had, uh, had proclaimed was coming, uh, that that was later attached to him. Um, and, and we see that more in John than, than some of the other gospels. Uh, although I do think we do see, see that earlier on. And, um, uh, but the second piece, uh, I feel a little bit more uh, strongly about um, that, um, that Jesus didn't see his ministry in terms of that eschatological uh, reality, that the, 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 uh, the kingdom was coming at any moment. Um, uh, certainly Mark, as is, is Mark talks about it, there's an immediacy uh, uh, to, uh, to everything, but, uh, but Borg claims that neither of those truths that are pretty heavily laden upon uh, uh, the person of Jesus in the way that we understand them uh, weren't immediate intentions of Jesus, but were added by uh, the folks that, that were writing later on uh, and, and were more theological layers placed upon Jesus' ministry. And then the four things that, uh, that he does claim about Jesus, uh, the first one he goes into the most detail about, um, that, uh, that Jesus, like the prophets before him and like folks from other traditions, uh, was deeply connected to God. Uh, that uh, that he had a spiritual awakening uh, and that he uh, knew God in a very intimate way uh, that um, that what uh, he had to say and and share was truth um, that that power that came from him uh, was a gift of the spirit from God and and, and, and part of that knowing with God uh, he also uh, was a, a teacher of wisdom uh, certainly we see a, a good bit of that um, that he was a, a social prophet. Uh, he tried to turn uh, and did turn uh, norms upside down, and, and that was an important part of his ministry, uh, which again, uh, if we teeter too much towards uh, cross and empty tomb, we miss a lot of that uh, social prophet, uh, prophetic edge, those sharp teeth, um, and that he was a movement founder. The Jesus movement certainly, uh, certainly was established through him. Uh, but I do think that there's there's more to Jesus than um, than these four truths. And um, while I think that there's not necessarily an exclusivity in Christianity uh, to, to God, that uh, that Jesus is the the way, the truth, and the light, uh, the way that I have come to understand the nature of God, the self-revelation of God, uh, I don't believe that um, that Jesus is the only avenue, uh, but I do think that Jesus can be holy God, uh, that the Trinity can be true, uh, that, that, that we can believe in a God of relationship, um, and that we can believe in the incarnation, and Jesus is the, the, uh, the fullness of God, um, carried all the way through, uh, through his life, his teaching, his healing, uh, his willingness uh, to be handed over to death, his emptying uh, of himself upon the cross, uh, and the power of that, that, that love uh, and, and, and of, the, uh, of God in being raised uh, from the dead. I think all of those can be true, um, um, and there still be room uh, in, in our theology and in our understanding for, uh, for other people to come to God uh, through different truths, through different faiths um, and knowing. Uh, but, uh, but I don't need uh, that to come at the expense of um, the divinity of Jesus. And so, uh, so that's a little bit of where I am uh, right now in the first couple chapters of the book. And I hope you find this helpful and I uh, hope it informs your reading and I uh, hope it challenges you in the same way that, uh, that he has always challenged, challenged me. And, and I hope uh, not only does he maybe open up uh, new things to you and, and invite you to, to fall in love with, with Jesus in new ways, but also uh, uh, 
to put your foot down and assert what it is that, that you find uh, true and meaningful about the, the person, uh, the, uh, the Godhead uh, in Jesus Christ. So, um, so enjoy your reading, and uh, I'll be with you again next week. Take care.